Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Chemistry. In this video, we're going to be looking at um, ion electron configurations. And uh, it's pretty simple actually. So, for anions, okay, so that's um, a, this is a review an ion which has a negative charge. We write the electron configuration of the isoelectronic atom which is neutral in charge. So, isoelectronic means the same number of electrons. So, I think if you do an example, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so we look at fluorine here, um, F minus. Uh, so if you look at a periodic table, a regular fluorine atom which has a neutral charge would have the same number of protons and electrons. So that would be nine protons and nine electrons. However, um, since we're talking about F minus, it has to have one extra electron to get that minus one charge. So that would be 10 electrons. So what we basically do is we look at the isoelectronic atom. So basically we say the atom which has 10 electrons um, and that is neon, and then we just write the electron configuration for neon. So that would just be uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, um, let's, let's do another one, this here. So for phosphorus, um, phosphorus is right here. Um, a regular phosphorus atom would have 15 electrons. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a regular phosphorus atom would have 15 electrons and 15 protons. However, we're talking about P3 minus, so that's three more electrons to get that three minus charge. So that's 18 electrons. So we look at the atom which has 18 electrons, um, the isoelectronic atom. So that would be argon. So we just write the electron configuration for argon 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Now, when you talk about an, um, cations, which are um, positively charged um, elect um, ions, we remove electrons from the highest energy level orbitals first, and then remove from p orbitals before s orbitals. So, what I mean by that is, uh, let's do these problems. I think this will make sense. So, write the electron conversion for sodium. Uh, I think the easiest way to do this is simply just uh, simply just uh, write the electron configuration for the neutral atom first. Um, so for sodium, that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Okay, um, so what we basically do is remove electrons from the highest energy level orbitals. So what, my, what I mean by that is we look at the numbers here, 1, energy level 1, energy level 2, energy level 2, and energy level 3, and we just look at the, take the highest number, since 3 is the highest energy level, and we remove the electrons from there first. So since um, sodium plus, um, we're going to have to lose one electron, right, um, in order to get that positive plus charge, we just remove the electrons here. So our um, electron configuration for sodium is just 1s2. 2s2, 2p6. So that would be 10 electrons and 11 protons to get that plus charge, plus one charge, right? Okay, now um, let's do these. Electron configuration for iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. So again, same strategy. Let's go ahead and just write the electron configuration of the neutral atom, just iron. So iron is right here. So electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3d10. 1s2, let me use the red color. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. Okay, uh, so here again we remove the electrons from the highest energy level orbitals first. So what does that mean is we don't remove the electrons from um, here first, even though that technically the d orbitals have more energy than the um, s orbitals, uh, we remove them from the highest energy level. So we, we remove them from here since this number 4 is the greatest out of all the numbers here. So uh, for iron 2 plus, we, uh, we need to remove two electrons um, to achieve that 2 plus charge. So um, that would just, the electron configuration would be on s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 
3d6 and then now um, for the final um, to get to fe3 plus which is um, the uh, which is three electrons lost we already lost two we would write uh, we'd remove the electron from this d orbital here so 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and then 3d5 so remove it from the highest energy um, level first. Okay, even though this technically the um, the s orbitals have less energy um, than the d orbitals. Okay, make sure you remember that. Uh, let's finally do the electron configuration for tin, um, the tin ion two plus, and then tin ion with the four plus charge. Okay, so um, let's just write the noble gas configuration for these because uh, I don't want to take the time to actually write the whole electron configuration. So tin is right here. So we just write krypton in brackets and then 5s2, 40, 10, and then 5p2. Uh, and this is the neutral atom, by the way. 5s2, 40, 10, and then 5p2. Okay. Um, so from here, we, we again write, we remove um, from the highest um, energy orbitals first, so we wouldn't remove it from 4d, we remove it from 5. Uh, and we have to remove from p orbitals before s orbitals. So for um, tin 2 plus, uh, we remove from the p orbitals first, those two electrons, to get that plus 2 charge. And then for um, tin 4 plus, we remove from the, uh, from the s orbital. Okay, and we don't even touch this, even though it technically has more energy than the s orbitals, we have to remove from the highest number um, energy level, okay? And again, notice I remove the p orbitals, um, the electrons from the p orbitals first before I remove the electrons from the s orbitals. Uh, the reason for that is because the p orbitals have, are easier to remove than the s orbitals, which you're going to be talking about, but just make sure you just understand this, okay? Move from p orbitals before s orbitals. Okay, so now that we have that figured out, let's talk about ground state versus excited state. So we talked about in Bohr's atom how the ground state of the electron was the electron, um, the electron, basically the the setup of the electrons where the electrons have the lowest amount of energy, and how an excited state was when the electrons get energy and they start moving up in energy levels. So in the same sense, in the quantum mechanical model, whenever electrons get um, um, energy, they can also move, jump up in um, in, in 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 orbitals. Okay, so for example, let's say oxygen. Oxygen. The electron configuration for oxygen is one s two, two s two, two p four. I think. One s two, two s two, and then two p four. Um, so uh, let's write the electron distribution so we can better understand this. So one s, two s, one two three, one s, two s, two p. 2p and 2p, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what am I doing? Yeah, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so what can happen, this is a ground state, right? We, what we have been writing is ground states, but we can start to see um, electrons get, um, jump up into higher energy levels. So for example, we can see maybe this electron jump into a 3s orbital like this, you know? Or maybe we can see maybe one of these electrons here jump up into a 3p orbital, you know? Over here. Okay. Um, and then we'd write the um, electron configuration for this to be 1s2, 2s1, 2p3, 3s1, 3p1. So um, this, is this electron configuration is basically saying that the uh, they have... It's there's um it's an excited state they have gain, gained energy but it's still valid okay so um typically you're gonna see questions which says is this um electron configuration valid for a atom so my strategy for that is first things first just count to see if it's the same number of electrons so we know that oxygen has four um eight electrons so we can just add these numbers up two plus one is three plus three is six plus one plus one is eight so we know that that's correct and then also look within the um 
the um, sub levels and see if they have the same um, if the if there's something um, egregious, right? So you can't have something like one s two, two s two, two p fifteen, okay? Because the, the sub levels still can't have um, those rules still apply. The sub levels can't have as um, any more electrons than they're assigned, okay? Because you can't have fifteen electrons within a p sub level. Okay, so just make sure you check for those two things before deciding whether the configuration is actually valid. Okay, but you know, again, you might have seen this already. It's this is not wrong. This is just indicating that some of the electrons have just gone extra energy and they've risen to um, higher energy levels and they're therefore in the excited state. Okay, um, so that's it for now. Um, stay in tune. I think in the next video, we're going to be talking about exceptions to um, electron distribution, which is going to be pretty interesting. But that's it for now. Um, ion, electron configurations, and ground state versus excited state is as simple as that.